Hey everybody, happy oh, week four. <laughs> Welcome back, how are we all going? I hope you've all had a wonderful week off last week and you were able to go back over the different modules and just sort of see the different aspects of things that um, it's interesting to see what we choose to do and what we choose not to do and, um, and be able to be witness to what's really sitting there for you and in, in the reasons as to why you're not getting involved. Like I know I'm always, my beliefs are always, I'm too busy to make time. I'm too busy to get it done. I'm too busy to see it through. Um, it's very, very interesting. All we are doing, like we've said before, is becoming aware of the stories and the, the uh, cycles that we keep playing out and seeing how they do or do not serve us anymore and then putting in strategies to start to work with them. So with being week four, I've got another awesome presentation I'm super proud of um, that I wanted to share with you all. Um, and we've got a nice bit of uh, information to go through today that I hope you guys are going to absolutely love. I'm going to bring up my notes. Okay, so um, week four. What have we got to do this week? What are the little tweaks that we're having this week? How have you gone with last week's tweaks? What are some little priorities that you know you could get on top of this week to really help you get to your goals? Is it having more water? How's our timing of our caffeine? How's our sleeping patterns? How's our commitment to doing our physical exercise and activities? Um, I know that while I've been away, I've been um, walking a lot. Um, um, and just keeping my body moving as much as possible, doing lots of breath work, ensuring I drink a lot of water and I have a lot less caffeine than I have been over the last couple of months. Um, I think I've only had one coffee since I've been away, which is great. So looking at those habits, what are the little action plans? What are the little Kaizen baby step processes that keep it simple that we are working on achieving each week? What are those things for you? Have you posted them in this week's module to keep yourself accountable? This week, we're really tapping into the conversation of self-awareness. So, as many of you would know, when people are acting poorly, it can generally be related to their levels of stress. Their levels of self-awareness and their health type will also be greatly affected by the stress. All the, these three um, components really bring together self-awareness and the ability to really uh, regulate oneself and make the gradual improvements that we're seeking. Many of these aspects are, um, uh, men, sorry, many of these aspects, as they are, are out of our control. But when we understand them more, we can then leverage our strength and a whole lot more and aim to have fantastic interactions with everyone around us. This module is not about blame but more about taking ownership and truly understanding those around you and adapting so that you have greater understanding of yourself and you're able to support others to express their better selves too. So self-awareness. There are three aspects to this, which we're going to talk about today. Self-awareness, stress cycles, and your health type and how this is all relevant. So a higher level of self-awareness creates, uh, sorry, sorry, a higher level of self-awareness creates less stress and more resilience. The more awareness that you have, the more you're going to be able to check in on yourself and recognize when you are falling off the wagon or whether when you are in a reactive state, it really enables you to um, tune into your own dialogue and understand your own habits and your um, uh, idiosyncrasies that have you playing out old patterns rather than progressing further forward. This self-awareness allows us to step out of, um, out of, uh, what is it, just drive and actually change gears ourselves and understand that one is coasting and the other one is actually having full control and awareness and playing uh, all in on the life that we've been given. Um, so what affects one person will actually affect other people. So if you think about it, like stress can come in many different formats. It can be um, running a race. It can be a family environment situation. One child's playing up so the rest of them can feel it and start playing up. But the greatest uh, way of looking at this would be like a football game. Who here has been to a live game of some kind? I haven't necessarily been to a big one myself, but I've been to enough smaller ones to fully understand this concept, is that if you're at a football game and you've got, everyone in the stadium, everyone's going crazy, everyone's cheering their team members on, everyone's 
whistling and clapping and cheering and swearing and everything's happening, naturally you will actually be far more likely to be getting involved, right? Because you're in the atmosphere, you're in the energy. There's actually a measurable electromagnetic field that extends to those around you. And it's actually fully, this is not woo-woo, this is not like spiritual, this is actual science. The electromagnetic field around each and every one of us is completely measurable. And when we're in elevated heightened states of stress, which again, like I said, can be a family trauma, can be a car accident, or in this instance, a football game, we can actually measure how much everyone around us is going to get a ripple effect or ongoing energetic uh, electromagnetic uh, impulse because of the conglomerate or the joint energy of everyone around them. So, Stressed people in, say, the family or the workplace will affect or will cause those around you to feel more stressed as a result. We've actually done cardiograms on workplaces where one staff member's just been sitting there at their desk doing their work with their back to the situation, the situation's happened in the rest of the office, and by effect, by electromagnetic field effect, the person who was sitting there not involved in any of the situation, doing their work, trying to stay on, on target, has, as an effect, been affected as an effect as yeah as an effect from the situation been directly affected without being directly involved due to the just the general energy in the area so understanding that everything that we do has a cause and effect to those around us whether we like it or not but that being said the greater the awareness one person has and then so it becomes like a war not a war like a, it becomes like a dance the person with the greatest awareness and the greatest amount of vibe will win right? So if you are just in a neutral, just plodding along, doesn't really care about anything, and someone who is high energy, happy on life, you know, go lucky, super excited and ecstatic just to be alive, comes into the room, you're naturally going to end up catching a little bit of that energy and noticing an elevation in your own energy and your own thoughts and your own emotions. So a neutral versus a positive person, the neutral person will feel more positive as a result. A really, really positive person versus a really negative person will actually end up equaling a neutral state for both of you because both are at a higher frequency. You're either going to both continue in your high frequencies or you'll both dumb it down or dull down um, to meet a, a, a lesser version of that so you can coexist in the same space. So families and workspaces, if you can go in and support those around you and join them, like if you're the high energy person who's happy, it's really, really great for you to go into those energies and those spaces and just think of it in that way. How can I go into this energy, into this space, into this environment and support those around me to be a happier, healthier version of themselves as much as I possibly can throughout each day? Really great food for thought. So why is self-awareness uh, important? What do you notice in people who are more self-aware? Have you noticed? People who are more self-aware tend to be able to reflect on their actions and the situation that's currently at hand. They'll be able to have regulation. So they'll be able to regulate their own thoughts and emotions and reactivity. They'll then be able to accept a little more control or a little more um, input of what their standpoint is in the situation and all the moving parts of everyone around them and what that means for everyone as a whole. So understanding that a more self-aware person ends up in a greater position of power and a greater position of compassion. Therefore, choosing whether or not they are going to remain in a reactive state, whether they're going to help the situation. There are actually eight levels of awareness. I'm going to go through them now. Um, the first one would be external and unaware. These are the people that are unconscious and they blame everyone. They're constantly blaming every human, everything. They get angry at everyone um, and everything is continuously everyone else's um, fault and they are constantly the victim. This can eventually move across into proactive awareness, but that's at a later state. The next level would be external and aware. These are the people that are mad and frustrated and you don't even know why. You've got like a bad attitude, no control, and it's everyone else's fault still. But you're aware that you know that. It doesn't get you anywhere. Then we go into passive awareness. I know and I am blaming you, but that is the way it is. I'm aware 
you are um i'm aware that you're you are aware that you're blaming someone else but not doing anything about it then we come into conflicted awareness so it's like i know i am meant to take ownership for the things in my life however it's still their fault for the conflict they did the thing and now i am not and you know i'm not wanting to take away that blame uh, and I know that I probably should be, but I still am going to allow these outward feelings and I'm still going to blame them, but it's hard for your brain to process as they've done something that's very, very hard for you to let go of. So you'll be stuck in this conflicted awareness that you know you should think better and feel better and do better, but your emotional standpoint or your emotional investment in the situation far outweighs your ability to self-regulate and be self-aware and pull back the reins into um, taking ownership. Then we come into burdened awareness. So everything that's happened to me is my fault. I've got to take ownership for it, which can be good. But the caution here is compiling all of the things and feeling all of the matter that everything is your fault. So it's like this, this congested, almost constipated state because everything is on you. Then we come into active awareness. So I can see why they did that in this situation. I understand the rationale of why they did what they did. And I understand how they got to where they are, but I, and I'm okay with the situation and why they got tri triggered. So you're actively aware, you're actively understanding the situation. Maybe you've still been triggered, but you've still been able to come to terms shortly afterwards and start to view it from a much healthier and more aware standpoint. So it's like, you know that this person's chaotic versus you being orderly. So knowing that that person is chaotic, you're aware of that situation. You're aware of how that triggers you. And bit by bit, moment by moment, uh, event after event, you'll grow more and more aware and capable of being able to self-regulate yourself, but also anticipate the other person and accept them for the energy and the capacity of who they are. So it's about accepting the other person. Then we come into active improvement. So this is more like, I can see that I'm orderly, their chaotic vibration, uh, they're the chaotic variation. And between us, it's going to be continuously like this. So next time, instead of getting frustrated, I'm going to set an expectation that this time they will be chaotic in this moment. And I will go with the flow with their chaos I will set myself to adjust to the other person just for that time. And then once that time's finished, I can go back into my orderly space to accomplish the task and ensure that everything is followed through in a sequential logical order for myself or in the way that I know that I function best in my genius. Very, very, very nice space to be in. Then we come into proactive awareness. So you know someone's chaotic and you are orderly. You will structure a plan time to do this with them to allow them to be in their genius. They clearly are lateral thinkers and chaos is where they create their magic. So you allow time for them to be in their zone and fully with your attention and support for them, knowing that then you can step away and go into your genius and flow and create your genius and flow in the way that you need to, to ensure that the structure in the back end ensures the success for all. It's about knowing and honoring the movement, the, sorry, the moment and not losing yourself, but momentary, momentarily, just for that moment, allowing for the other person to be whatever they need to be and accepting that. So this is really a way about stepping away from blame. It's about really owning our own space and our own awareness and our own zone of genius. So the perfect examples would be going into understanding this with the health types. So let's think of like, let's think of a child, like a five-year-old child. They want a cookie. They love cookies. And you say no. They will naturally go into external and unaware. And they will want that yummy cookie. And they're pissed off because you won't give it to them. Then they may even go into external and aware. So this is where I know why I'm upset, mummy. I want the yummy cookie and you won't give it to me. Then as an aware person, you don't punish a child. They're five years old and they just want the really yummy cookie, right? That's, that makes logical sense to them. Cookies are the best thing in the world. <laughs> but they don't have the awareness yet. So you will be interacting 
you will you will be the one interacting with the, the different awareness. What an aware person would do is, I totally understand why this child is behaving this way. And so as an aware person with the child that is a non, or let's say a, let's say a connected child, a connected child, you would know, we would know that a connected child needs fun play and distraction. So you would go and give them some love, a cuddle, a bit of intimate connection, and then you would ultimately create a distraction for the child and quite possibly the child would forget that they even wanted the cookie in the first place. Or you're an aware person and maybe you've got a crusader child. This is totally relevant to adults as well. So crusaders need to understand why. So you would give them an explanation as to why reducing cookies in their diet is going to be very beneficial so that they are healthy and strong, they have a good brain, they have good energy, and then they get to have all the extra playtime and they're going to feel better about everything. They need to know the logic as to why you're reducing the cookies. So picture a friend, a family member, a workmate, and think about what level of awareness they are operating from most of the time. Someone really close to you, someone that really affects your day in, day out. Then I'd like you to reflect on yourself. Where do you think your level of awareness is currently sitting? As you become more aware, you will flow through these stages much quicker. We are all human and we all fluctuate in and around all of the eight stages, depending on the situation. But once we get to start having these conversations more frequently, you start to become a lot more aware of yourself and you get to check in at each and every moment. What are the state that you're in most of the time? Generally, a rule of thumb is if you are the person who is most aware, it is your responsibility to adapt to, adapt to the other person in the situation. What does a person in this situation need from me to reduce the stress for them so that all can win? Because ultimately, both of you trying to win and come into a state of winning is only going to end up with butting heads and no one will get anywhere fast. Always assume, this is the second rule, always assume that you have more awareness, therefore you need to step up and beside this person and support them the best you can to always ensure that both of you are winning. So let's come into the conversation about natural versus habitual. This is a massive, massive conversation. A lot of you may have realized already within your profile that there are a lot of things that don't necessarily, don't necessarily match what you've done all along. There will be parts of your life, like here we have the early risers. They wake up, they're out of bed, they're bouncing up and they're moving about. Then we have the late risers. The t-shirt I found is so cute. It says the early bird can have the worm because worms are gross and mornings are stupid. How many of you guys would resonate with that? I know I do. I'm like, everyone can just go away. <laughs> so understanding natural versus habitual. The perfect example of this is like myself. I spent most of my life as a personal trainer, an early riser. I was full of anxiety. I bounced out of bed and I would just go, 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 go. Someone, if someone had told me this years ago, I would have told them they were ridiculous because I felt like I had to get everything done first thing in my morning or else I wasn't being productive. I didn't feel like I was going to get anywhere. I felt useless. I felt lazy. And it just seemed totally counterintuitive. And society, everyone in society is telling you, get up early, do more in your day, set your alarm earlier, be more productive. But for our late rises, our night owls, our endomorphs, this is like death. Eventually the body will get really tired and really worn down and a whole host of issues will come about. So understanding that our natural cycle of existing sometimes will be very counterintuitive to what society has ingrained within us as our general coping mechanisms and how we need to behave to just get by. What we're talking about within this program is finding your natural flow, fully embracing it, becoming very aware of how your body actually really feels in these situations and understanding that bit by bit, day by day, through the Kaizen process, you are all under instructions every single day to reboot, recap, and clear everything out. So today I'm going to ask, what have you not yet found enjoyment in completing from the beginning of this program to now? What units or in-home or in-body tasks have you not yet embraced? Are all your cupboards clear? Are they restocked? Are they full with honouring foods? Are there conversations with your boundaries and those around you that are 
needing to happen so that you are honoring all the requirements that you need to be successful in integrating day by day the small perfections towards better change. What are the small continuous little steps that we can be taking so that you are slowly but successfully processing and progressing further forward? So what will be your simple action steps to success this week, today, tomorrow? What will be your end result? Let's, let's look at the end. What did you really want at the, from this whole program? What were you investing in this program for? What was it that you knew you wanted and needed? Now, what will it take to get there? Let's reverse it back. Do you need to go shopping? Do you need to clear the cupboards out? Do you need to set some more time aside for this? Do you need to be honoring yourself? Are you sitting on the hamster wheel or are you setting your own pace and staying in your own lane? Are you doing things just because you simply think you should? This is a dangerous, dangerous slope. This moment is all about owning this program. Yes, I created it, but you're here, you invested, you chose to be in this space. Owning this program is understanding that, yes, there's a platform that is telling you some things that you probably should be thinking of and doing and, and putting in place, but it really is understanding that your DNA, your body, your measurements, put the data into the machine, and the machine is simply showing you without any emotions, expectations, or obligations, or society's dictations on what is right or wrong, your body put into the machine what it really needs. And it's up to you to step outside of your ego and outside of your conditioning to start to listen to what your body actually really wants here. Are you, uh, no, I just missed myself up with reading notes that I missed. <laughs> so, I love this picture. <laughs> so it's really about understanding that we are all in the middle of decisions, every single moment of every single day. The bad news is you can't get it right. The good news is you can't get it wrong. This is all a process of learning, step by step, bit by bit, moment by moment. All we are here to do is to learn the greater choices, to learn by our mistakes, to decide to be all in with the Kaizen process and stepping through what is better for you in the next moment? I would like you all to ensure that you come to me with your ugliest in this program. And just know that there is nothing that you can say or do that is ever going to be less than perfect in this moment. So with that being said... I'm going to leave this for another conversation. I think we've done enough today. That's 20 minutes. What thoughts and questions came up for you? What are you feeling into this week? Have you gone through the modules? I know this week has got a few videos that I've popped up. Some are short, some are longer. Get through them. There are some dynamite content. I would love to hear what comes up for you through this process. Just know that everything you bring to the table is perfect. And I'm so excited to have you guys here and to see how you are after your week three of rest and recalibration. And I hope you are ready to rock it out in the most successful week you've had yet. Because it's your choice as to how successful it gets to be. But really learn to celebrate the wins, all the small wins, and know that you are guided, you are supported, and this is exactly where you need to be. Have an awesome week, guys.